So, here we have the Volkswagen GTI Mark V we had in for a timing chain, or at least had it faced for a timing chain. We were supposed to get it done two weeks ago, but uh, unfortunately the rocket cover gasket was delayed, so we had to wait uh, an extra week. And um, in the meantime, pushing out it back a week, we did end up with the Sora, which was a surprise. So we were thankfully busy with the Sora, and um, now that the parts have arrived, we're getting back onto the GTI. So, all parts are here. We have the rocket cover gasket. This will be likely to seal, we'll be using, so it's just maker gasket, sort of uh, red RTV, high uh, temperature gasket maker, silicon based, I'm pretty sure, and uh, we'll be using that for the actual uh, chain housing. We've got the carbon rings here. These are sealing rings for the actual oil control solenoid for the um, tire, what do you call it, camshaft adjuster. So these are pretty important. They actually go brittle and they crack as you pull these apart. I'll be able to show you them as we pull this out. You have the hydraulic tensioner, and this is, um, if the chain doesn't stretch, this thing also fails. So there's a spring in there that holds pressure on the chain here uh, while the engine's uh, not running. And then as soon as this builds up with pressure, all pressure takes over and holds the uh, pressure against the chain. So these usually flog out and these usually stretch. This is a chain here. And we also have a pretty important check that you should be doing at least every 120, I would say, at least 120,000 kilometers. This is actually the fuel pump bucket. So on the Mark 5 BWAs, I don't think they change until the Mark 6 GTI engine, which are driven, chain driven. These actually wear out, and you'll actually see this um, sort of like a ceramic coating there, which is dark. They'll actually be wear within the center, it'll start going silver, so it'll wear through the actual ceramic and start getting through to the metal. That's when you know it's stuff. So we'll probably see some wear in this one when we pull it out but um, won't know until we actually get to it. So that's definitely something I'll be showing today and how to check that, what to look for, and why it's important. When these fail, if you don't change this in time and it starts getting rattly, you'll actually have the fuel pump bucket or the fuel pump piston rubbing on the actual camshaft itself. And at that point, you'll need a new camshaft. So this is a pretty important check. Uh, we have the special tools you require for the job. So this one's quite important. This is actually for the uh, camshaft adjuster bolt. So this is actually not a Torx bit. People mistake it as a Torx bit. If you use a Torx bit, you're going to strip that bolt and you're going to have a real hard time getting that bolt out. So this is a poly drive and it's important that you distinguish between poly drive and Torx bits. It looks like a Torx bit, but as you can see, it's got squared off edges. So don't mess that up. You must get a poly drive bit. So this poly drive bit is, um, well, I can give you the part number, so it's 240080. So order that online and you'll be all right. Uh, we also have the cam kit, cam adjust, or sorry, cam chain kit here. Um, sort of everything you need for a timing chain on a BWA engine. So you'd find, as I was saying earlier, you find the BWA engine, or at least this, this style 2 litre TFSI engine in the Mark VI. Uh, Golf R and the Mark 5 GTI as well as the Pirelli and stuff like that. So Yeah, so TFSI is turbo um, FSI is fuel stratified injection. So stratified is pretty much just direct injection So yeah, you find this engine on pretty much Mark 6 and Mark 5 only. I don't think you see it at all Mark 7 by Mark 7 that completely completely new and new engine altogether How to check that you've got a worn um, or how to know that you've got a worn chain so a big telltale sign is when you go to start it up in the morning and you hear rattle, 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 rattle. So there's a difference between low oil pressure rattle and chain rattle. So you can hear it, uh, especially if you haven't run a car for a while, it'll rattle and you know once oil pressure builds up, it goes away. That's the same thing, once oil pressure builds up on the actual chain tension, which I was saying here, the noise will go away. But the thing is when, you, when your chain is actually stretched, it'll continue to rattle very faintly. It's hard to, um, it will be hard for me to show you through the camera, unfortunately, but a good test. This should have no tap, tap, tap noise. You'll hear a little bit from the pump, but generally it sounds like rollers. So when you put, yeah, you want something sort of like a pry bar here or a screwdriver that's straight through where you can actually get onto the metal. I would hold that onto the housing, hold my ear onto it, and you'll actually hear tick, 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 tick. It'll be like a, a really, really obvious metal to metal sound and it will stand out. That's your chain actually rattling around. So. That's um, an issue, and obviously if, that's, uh, if that stretches too far, your cam correlation will, will, will actually be quite a fair bit out, and you can probably even get some engine codes there, because um, obviously you're gonna have more of our overlap and mess with systems like that. You, you, just, you just don't wanna let that go. So obviously you wanna get onto that pretty soon. So it is always best to get someone who is professional, and um, sorry, who's 
been in the trade and has a lot of experience, but as I said, I'm all for hobbies and people having a hobby and throwing themselves into anything and learning. That's what I do and, you know, it's pretty much what a mechanic does day to day. So as long as you take it slow and you make sure you're doing everything right and you're not cutting corners, you should be fine. So I hope this helps someone and yeah, we'll see how we go. Anyway, let's pull this engine apart. This is a K&N Typhoon intake. Uh, I think on eBay it's roughly maybe about I think eleven hundred dollars. It's pretty expensive, but you'll probably pick up intakes very similar to this that will do the same job for a lot cheaper. But um, this actually came with the car when we bought it, so someone spent big, and we're not complaining. But uh, on your vehicle, if you have the stock intake, you'll actually have a, an elbow joint here that will come up to around where this came up to about here, and it'll be an oval. I recommend just blocking that off with just one rag. Make sure you keep an eye on that just one rag and make sure you know you've removed it when you finish the job. You don't want that getting sucked into the turbo. Just to avoid anything dropping in there. So we don't have one here, but we have the turbo inlet here and we'll just be blocking that off. I have a few plugs in my own industry, so I should have a plug that I'll be able to block the turbo off with. You've probably seen in my previous videos on the Sora. So just to avoid anything falling in there and damaging the intake system, the turbocharger, or even worse, falling into the engine itself. So, yeah, I'd just like to keep that covered. Bucket. So as you can see, she is no good. That is very worn. And so you can see here, now we'll just compare it to the new one. So there you go. So you can see right there, this is the no good one and this is the new one and you can see the ceramic coating. So it might be a little bit hard to see but they're two actually different colours. Can you um, tap that joint so we can get some better focus? There we go. So there is no coating anymore on this. This is this looks almost months, if not years, overdue. Thankfully, not true all the way through, but that's definitely, um, yeah, not what you want to see. So again, that's a worn cam bucket for the fuel pump, and there is a good one with the coat, ceramic coating, as I was saying earlier. So it's actually a dark color. You can see on the top there. It's actually almost a carbon color. It's, um, yeah, that's the coating you want to see. And so usually only a very, very small, maybe uh, a worn away dot within maybe three mils, you'll, you'll usually see, and you probably, you can probably reuse it, but I'd probably replace it at that point. But that you definitely don't want to see. So yeah, we've got a worn camshaft bucket. Lucky, eh? That is no good. <laughs> So what you want to check for when you remove the vacuum pump is oil underneath the bottom. So this has only just started to weep. And we used to actually reseal these with a bit of um, Loctite 518. 
and it used to do the job, you know, it used to seal them up and have no issues with it, but you're probably just better off replacing it to be honest. Um, another thing to keep note of is there is an o-ring here, and this one's actually looking a bit flat, so so yeah you can see that's quite flat and um, these replacements so you ideally that's going to be an o-ring so it's going to be cylinder but obviously this has been flat for some time and given that it's leaking it's been on here for a while so it's probably due for replacement but we'll be trying to seal this up with a bit of 516 which is not 518 it's a bit more I guess thinner but it should do the job we should be alright So to avoid damaging these rings, you want to pull this whole housing as straight back and as square back as possible. That's easier said than done. It's definitely very difficult. So uh, usually you find we'll try and lever it off, but I'm going to try and pull it off as square as possible for you guys and see if I can save the rings. I will be replacing them anyway as we have these here. She looks a bit wonky. One of the um, one of the harnesses in the way. Oh, I saved them. Where are they? So there, the carbon rings there. You can see me spinning them. They usually break when you remove them, and they can break going back in, but I've saved them today. So these would be reusable, but we're gonna replace them anyway. They go brittle and they break fairly easy. So we'll go back to the chain now. Here's your cam adjuster. So that's the cam adjuster there, and that's operated by these Control rings that direct oil flow to the cam adjuster, and there's a few little drilled holes into the actual adjuster itself. And here's a chain, so it's not floppy at the moment, but we will be able to show a floppy as I turn the engine over. Here's the camshaft, there is actually a little bit of wear there on the load, but it's nothing to worry about. Just in the very tips, but you're going to see that with time anyway. So she's wearing away, but nothing um, too serious. Yeah, let's keep chugging away and see.
So ideally to get a top dead center, there are timing marks on the actual harmonic balance of that lineup with the, um, the lower timing cover. But I do not feel like removing the right hand wheel at the moment or the inner guard liner. That's just adding to the job and time. So we probably also can see with a mirror as I turn this um, camshaft sprocket. There is also, bring it over here, a timing mark there as you can see, TDC with that white, um, white bit of uh, paint marker there with an arrow. That's top dead center and there will actually be a notch in the camshaft. So we'll line those up at least. But there is also an old school and old method that I was taught as well. And that's why I removed the spark plug. So we're gonna sit this gently into the ball. So at the moment, that's that piston is near bottom dead center. And we're gonna wind it all the way until this reaches its top and stops moving. So as soon as it's at the rock where it sort of goes up and then back down, we know it's top dead center. So wind the engine over and find top dead center the old fashioned way. So ideally you can do, you should do this with a dial ball gauge, which just screws into the spark plug thread. But I don't have one of those with me at home. So we're just gonna do it with an extension, the three extension and always do it with your longest extension. You don't want that rock into the cylinder. Shouldn't anyway, but with the um, flared bit of the 3 8 but just to avoid, just always use the longest one. Or a long screwdriver, probably a screwdriver might be better. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you always turn the engine from the crankshaft, never from the cam, never from the water pump, never from anything else, you always turn it from the crankshaft. In this case it's a 19mm socket, multi-hex, and uh, I forgot to bring my long half inch ratchet, so we're just using a stumpy ratchet, hence why this looks so difficult. Not ideal, but rush to get out of work. I'm about to grab the proper ratchet I needed for the job. So I'm paying for it now. So we're gonna go until this stops going up and that will tell us that our piston is at top dead center. So it's starting to slow down. And that should be it there. So there you go. So there's the timing mark right there. As you can see, there's a little bit of uh, white paint marker. And that lines up, or should line up, with top dead center. It can probably go a little bit further. So just watch that. There. Okay, that should be it. And there we go. That paint pen mark and notch should be lined up with that top dead center arrow. And there we go. So we'll leave that in there for reference and uh, we'll start pulling the chain apart. Mm -hmm. So looking at the condition of the camshafts, they all look pretty good actually, which is I expected. I was mainly concerned about the fuel pump, the three surface cam load there, but everything else was pretty good and actually doesn't look too dirty in here. It's definitely due for an oil change, but otherwise it's not too bad, not too stained. So yeah, we've had oil leaks from the rocket cover into the spark plug tubes, it's a pretty common thing. So that'll need to be cleaned up and this will get a good degrease after. We put it all back together. But yeah, so the reason you want to pull the rocket cover off is see these cutouts here in the camshaft. 
they obviously allow you to get to the head bolts but it's also what you use to lock the camshafts in place when you do this chain so you'll see there's two arrows here uh, it, that's a reference point on the actual um, I forgot what you call it but I guess the uh, digital maintenance manual it'll say you line this up with, um, I think halfway between the lobe sorry and um, sorry the high rise part of the lobe and the low point of the lobe but we'll just use this tool so it's supposed to be oh, that's what it's for. right tool it should just slide in place it does. and it does so we're gonna put it's all lined up now we know it's lined up as that is in place and to lock that in place with two 10 mils, do not drop these 10 mils into the engine. <laughs> You'll be in big trouble if you do. I'm trying to fish those out, hopefully, they drop in a sump if you do drop them, but just don't drop anything into the engine. So, this should lock the plate in place, and we can carry on pulling the chain off. Yeah, right, kit. Success, that, that can turn real pear shaped real quick. So I think that's the friction surface there that helps it hold in place. That's why it's so hard for it to come undone, but yeah, you can really easily strip those internal poly drive if you use a Torx bit because these are actually square, as you can see. I'm not sure if it will focus, I'm hoping it does. There you go. As you can see, it's got square edges and the Torx bit has got sharp. And here's the poly drive, square edges, so that fits perfectly in there. It's a lot stronger than a Torx bit and it's a lot more lower mm -hmm. clearances, so solid. Oh, good job. So it's important to note, especially when going back on, there is a keyway lock there. So that's got to line up, but I'll get to that in a moment when we put the cam adjuster back on. So when you remove this tensioner, be wary that there is a gauze filter there that goes into that oval space there where you can see that oil port. That is easy to forget or I guess um, overlook or completely not know it's there in the first place and you'll lose it. And if you do leave it in the cam cover, obviously it'll disappear somewhere into the engine and you don't want that. You want that back on the new one in that spot there. So make sure you have a look and you find where that is in the engine, remove it and put it aside because you will need to put that back in place. That is a last chance oil uh, gauze filter and um, it is important obviously if you want your tension to keep working and not fill up with gunk. So yeah. So thankfully, the new one comes with a new gauze filter in place. As you can see, it's white. It's probably a bit hard to see there, but you can see it shimmering. So we don't need to put the old gauze filter back in, but again, make sure you've gotten the old gauze filter out of the engine. As, you, as I said, it's so small, you can uh, miss it and not see it at all. And yeah, it'll be floating around in the engine, causing damage, so we don't want that. Anyway, it's time to fit the new tensioner and um, get this chain back on. So, there is a, a locator pin right there, and that has to line up with the locating slot on the exhaust camshaft. So this is a bit of a, a tricky part. To get the chain on, you have to rotate it. So you would stick this just offset of the pin and the locator and we're going to use this special tool to rotate the intake camshaft until that slot lines up. 
and falls in place. So you would feel it go click and fall in place and you'll see a nice flush surface behind the uh, cam adjuster sprocket and the camshaft itself. So as you can see there's a locating pin here on the cam adjuster sprocket. So that has got to line up with this camshaft locator slot right there. So this tool here you're going to be, the, the springs are going to slightly push the camshafts apart from each other or away from each other and what you're going to do is you're going to stick the actual sprocket offset or slightly forward from the actual slot, locating slot and you're going to turn the intake cam anti-clockwise until the cam adjuster slots in and you'll see back here when it is to slot in you'll see that it sort of sticks out you want it flush you want the cam the camshaft sprocket flush with the actual camshaft so you can see there it'll end up being flush and that's what you want to see so you don't want to be kicked off to one side like that or anything like that otherwise you're going to have the cam adjuster spin and um, yeah we're in big trouble we're going to actually shear that pin and that's a bit of a fail safe but you want to avoid that from the very beginning so I'll just demonstrate it here I'm going to stick the coloured chain on the timing mark there as you can see there's a little slot cut out in the sprocket we're going to stick this onto the intake camshaft Slightly offset, as I said. Can't just quite see in there, unfortunately. I need my torch. Try to do it. Can. I have to go a little bit further. So just probably almost what will feel like a tooth away. feel it positively click so I actually turned it clockwise there to get it but basically you want to use a special tool here that you can purchase on eBay for 50 bucks you rotate it back and forth until the locating pin locates it'll be feel pretty positive when it slides in it'll just sort of click and um yeah I just want to hold that in okay can you In there. And now we're going to tighten. So the torque setting for the cam adjuster bolt is 20 newton meters and then 45 degrees. So you would go 20 newton meters, which is click, and then 45 degrees. That's the proper way to do it. And um, most people know that 20 newton meters is a really low torque setting anyway. But um, I've gotten away with doing this. I just go FT, which is effing tight and um, should do the job so it's a very fine thread so um, you only need to sort of you're only going to get a bit of a swing anyway but 45 degrees plus a little bit should do the job so as long as you're swinging just a little bit beyond 45 degrees you should be alright ready? Yeah. need me hold of this? that might be alright Now that 
we've tightened the cam adjuster, we can now pull the tensioning pin and we're done. So that should be done in place. Uh, if you want to check it, you can wind the engine over again as long as you can slot this plate back in. We are going to wind it over again by the way. As long as you can slot the plate back in, um, there's no timing issues. But it should be very difficult for the chain to jump off anyway. So we'll loosen off plate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As you can see, and that's really tight, so the bottom part of the chain is tight, so the lower part is definitely an indication of a loose chain. Or at least that the spring has failed, so either a stretch chain or a loose spring. So there you go. Right after that, mate. Mm -hmm. That's why I checked it. Stretched. Okay, so we're just checking our work now, winding the engine over. Until top dead center again, and the timing mark on the camshaft sprocket lines up with the timing mark on the back of the uh, backing plate, timing cover backing plate. Might have written your way easier. It's not straight in that time. Yeah. So that's what you want to see. So we'll wind up. Yeah. You hear that? Crackling like plastic. It's just brittle. All fun bits. Oh. <laughs> Way over there. Let's get this part. This part's good. Ready? Listen, this one. This will crack. It's kind of satisfying. That's supposed to be rubber. <laughs> no, it's plastic. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I get plastic out of there, eh? You come far enough to decide to do a chain on your own, you probably already know how to put lots of cover gaskets on. Uh, but this rule should really go for any sort of flange type, housing, gasket, whatever. Anything with multiple bolts, you should always start from the inside and out. And what you want to do is you want to spread, because it will flex as you tighten it down. It'll obviously flex, you want it to flex outways. If you decide to tighten outways in, you're going to flex it and it's going to bow right in the center and that's where you get cracks and possibly break something. So always go from the inside out. So. People, either y'all like to do a spiral, or some go in and sort of diagonal and sort of work their way out, but the basic rule and principle is you start from the inside and you work your way out. You also want to spread the weight as you're going along. Okay, so we're just replacing the carbon rings. Let's see, these ones are actually surprisingly pretty good. Usually brittle and they come out uh, broken. But thankfully, these seem to be not too bad. So you're just looking for where they're cut. They're actually sliced, sort of like a piston ring, so that they can spread over these surfaces. You just want to find where that cut out is and sort of flick it with a pick. I've already pre-coated this gasket with some flange sealant. I uh, like to use Loctite 518 or 515. Sponsor, please. <laughs> and um, 
seems to do the job pretty well. So you use that on machine surfaces, or pump around pumps and stuff like that, like that as well. Yeah, these are really fiddly. So the saying, you look for that cutout. I just like to spin them until it catches. There we go. And sort of get underneath it and flick it out. And you'll have to walk it over each ridge, unfortunately. Just want to be very careful with these. As I said, they're quite brittle. So you just want to spread them over one by one. So the same deal as pulling them off, but pushing them on. And you just want to take it slow. You don't want to break these. I can't remember what price they are, but I don't think they're cheap. Is silicon based high heat, um, high heat sealant, thankfully. Basically, you want to locate the oil control solenoid and use. There we go. Just slide on like so. Boom.
last minute checks, so always, seen, always check the crank, make sure you've removed your ratchets or anything connected. Any spinning components, just go have a good look once over, make sure no plugs are undone. We still have to secure this. So we'll just get all into the aviation and learning from an avionics guy. It's a good way to separate uh, wires and tubes from fretting on each other, or rubbing on each other, in other words. So, get two zip ties, one you loop, and that's it. Would have probably a better view from underneath, but good enough. I don't have flush cutters with me at the moment, but flush cutters are the best for zip ties so that if you're working in the engine bay, you don't cut yourself on the sharp ends. But I don't have them today, so. Cycled up the ignition a few times to get the air bubbles out of the fuel rail. It might take a little bit to start up. It is better. Yeah. You can see the reaction on his face. So he used to rattle quite a fair bit, especially in first startup. So 